Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Oh, we got a little bit of a clear. See if we can move that and get rid of it. Oh, there we go. Maybe a little bit better. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Let's go ahead and see who's on. And we'll wait just a minute or two and let everybody have a chance to find us. And then we'll get started. And hopefully I can find myself so I can see all of your comments. I hope everybody had a good week. Since last I saw you. And let's see. I really am not finding this. La, la, la. Let me, um, let's go here. And here, found it. And there we are. Hello, Laura. Thanks so much for joining. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you. Today was Nathan's last day of kindergarten. Abby has one more half day and then I'll have, well, tomorrow I'll have Nathan all day. And then I'll have them probably three days every week for the summer. So it'll be a little bit busier than it has been for me. We'll see how all of this goes, trying to do everything, watching the kids three days a week. I just have to be a little more organized, I think. Well, let's go ahead. And well, it's a 7.02. It's time to go. Let's go. Everybody else will find us. Okay, so... I just want to remind you about the sale going on through the month of June. And that is to take an extra 10% off of the stamp and die bundles, which are already discounted 10% over the single piece prices, which means that um, you save 10% over the price of a stamp and die when combined in the bundle price, but now you're going to save an additional 10% off of that bundle price. In addition, if you don't have a Stampin' Cut in a Boss Machine or a mini Stampin' Cut in a Boss Machine, those machines are all on sale for 10% off as well. So be sure to pick those up in the month of June if that interests you. And let's put that aside. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get started. We're using the Hearts and Hugs bundle today, and that is a stamp and die bundle. So you get 10 rubber uh, cling mount stamps, and then the dies, there are 12 dies. Now they aren't all in here because I'm going to use several of them tonight, and I have them here in my little tray for easy access. And then in addition to that, on the second project, we're going to be using the nested essential dies. Okay. So let's go ahead and set that aside because we don't need it for this project. And when you know it doesn't want to go in there. So let's set that aside. And for both my projects tonight, I am using the... Uh, Thoughtful Journey 6x6 six six Designer Series Paper. I love this Designer Series Paper, and I want to show you that it's not just to be used with florals and things. Um, it works great with this whimsical stamp set, even though the colors and the images in the scenery are gorgeous. Okay, I think this is on back order, but it'll be back by the end of the month. So... Um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, our sentiment for this um, card that we're going to make comes from the Sweetly Scripted, 
this stamp set is a cling mount stamp set. It has six long uh, sentiments. I love this stamp set. And this is part of the online exclusives. So be sure to check that section out in the online store. You won't find this in any publication. Okay, so we've got happy anniversary, congratulations, happy birthday, a million thanks, speedy recovery, and save the date. So that's a really nice sentiment set. Okay. So I'm going to put this aside because I've already pulled my pieces. This card is really pretty simple. It is a Knight of Navy card base. That's A2. Five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the center at four and a quarter. I've got a piece of that um, oh, Thoughtful Journey. Yep, Thoughtful Journey six by six designer series paper. And we're going to cut that down to four by five and a quarter. I've got a piece of Boho Blue cardstock. I believe this is four and an eighth. Yep, by five and three eighths. So I want just a real thin border. Okay. So let's go ahead and cut our designer series paper. I'm going to do that first. And I was kind of particular about how I did this. So I want the, I want this top part. So I'm going to cut this at four. Actually, I want a nice long piece. I'm going to cut this at five and a quarter first, all the way across. Okay, and then I want a little bit of both of this. So I know it's kind of a waste of paper, but I'm going to cut off a bit here. And then I'm going to flip this around and take it to the four inch side and cut that off. Okay. And this we're going to use on the inside of our card, that small little piece. Okay. So these pieces are not going to go to waste. Trust me. I'm going to put them back into my scrap bin and I will reuse them for another project. So now we have this piece and we're not going to do anything else. Oh, yes, we are. Don't let me do that. I'll mess it up. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to stamp our sentiment on this. So let's grab that. And I've got that set up here on my Stamparatus. And yes, I know this is retired, but I'm not giving mine up. So I need to put this, hang on, let me grab my stick and stamp mat, and I'm going to put this right along this line here, and then I think if I stick this right there, I should be lined up the way I was, and if not, we'll fix it. Because it won't really matter. Oh, you know what? Before we get started any further, I have ink on my stick and stamp mat I didn't take off. I need to take that off before I make a mess. Because that ink is still wet. Okay. Should have cleaned the stick and stamp mat. All right, let's go ahead and bring this here now and bring this in like this and if we need to move that sentiment we will I just want this to go in like so and then we're going to take a look at that yep that's about what I want okay so we're going to grab some Knight of Navy ink Gonna ink this up. And make sure that sticks where we want it to. In 
and cloud up. I got some smudges there. I don't like that to try and fix that, but I'm not sure it's going to be fixable. It's an opportunity to embellish, right? Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off because then I don't want that blue there. Okay. And then we're going to wipe this. Get that clean. And hope I can line that mat back up exactly how I had it. Otherwise, we're going to have to start over. I hope that's good. I hope that's good. Okay. Let's grab our... Uh, Versa mark. So we're going to emboss this sentiment. Okay. And looks pretty good. I'm going to pull that off. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to use my embossing buddy. So hopefully we don't get a bunch of strays. Let's go ahead and close up this night of navy before I have an ink catastrophe. <coughs> Clean that stamp off. <coughs> this out of the way. Grab our embossing powder. <coughs> Sorry, you guys. I was outside all day today, and the pollens have messed with my bronchio pneumonia. <sighs> okay. So we're going to take some clear embossing powder. And this isn't so critical with the embossing buddy because it's clear, and you're not really going to see it but I should have used the embossing buddy. Anyway. Okay, so that looks pretty good, and I don't see a bunch of extra where I don't want it. So let's go ahead and heat this up. I really like using the colored embossing powders on or the colored ink and then the clear embossing powder over the top. I just think it really pops. Okay, and there we are. So let's bring that up so you can take a look. Okay, so this now is ready to add to our boho blue piece. So let's put some stamp and seal on there. And I'm going to use more than I normally would because I've warped the paper with the heat. And I want this to lay down. So we're going to put this, remember there's just a very, very small border here. Okay, so we've got that. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm going to grab a drink here. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, Lynette. Hey, Lynette. Did they know, open a new bakery in Willamina? Okay. So we've got that. Now I can go ahead and add this piece. To my 
card base. I'm just gonna give my card base a good burnish so that will lay flat. And then I'm gonna fight that, I guess. And then we'll put this down. And you know what? I'm gonna use some liquid glue, some Tombow liquid glue here. Because this is such a tiny border, I have a hard time with these super tiny borders on card bases. So I'm going to use the liquid glue so I can have a second or two to slide that into place, hopefully, and get a nice even border. Get that on there before it sticks down totally. And then we'll give that a good press. Gonna go to the inside. I use my bowl folder to spread out that liquid glue. Okay, so we've got that. Now we're gonna take this scrap piece of petunia pop and we're gonna die cut some hearts with that. But before we do that, we're gonna grab a scrap piece of white cardstock. And we're going to stamp our little walruses. And apparently, I didn't print a piece of basic white in my envelope. So we're going to do this, but i got to cut this down so we can use the mini. So let's cut this down to three and a half. Because that's what we'll actually, I'm going to cut it at three and a quarter. I don't think I need more than that, so let's just do that. Just need a scrap to go through the mini. And then we're going to take our walruses. Which are where? Where are my walruses? They must be in here. They are. There we go. Okay. Let's grab those. And let's mount those on a block. Hopefully they fit on this one. Yep, right here. Okay. And then we're going to take some basic gray. I'm going to ink those upside down so I can see that I'm inking them. That's my favorite way to ink a large stamp. Such as this. I don't know that down and let that ink, si ink sink into the paper. Okay, give that just a second. And I'm gonna grab my um, uh, stamp and blends markers. But what did I do with the other ones? Did I put them away? Yep, I did. That was silly. Okay, so I'm going to start with the light gray granite. And I'm going to put just the tiniest bit of gray granite on the walrus. Um, oh, what do they call those things? That name just slipped the tusks. It just slipped right out of my brain for a second. Okay, and then I'm going to take my color lifter and I'm going to drag that color down. That will just give that appearance that the tusk is white, but not stark white. So I'm just using the color lifter to move those gray parts toward each other. <clears throat> And then we're going to take the light gray granite and we're going to do this little muzzly part. Okay. And then I'm going to go with the dark gray granite and I'm just going to put some dots in there where the artist had some dots. Then I'm going to go back with the gray, the light gray granite 
and dot right over the top of that just to blend that out a bit okay and there's that <clears throat> now let's take a look here and next we're going to do the noses and I'm going to use a light petal pink here just going to dot some color in there <clears throat> and then set those aside and we're going to go on with our light and dark smoky slate <coughs> excuse me start with the light smoky slate and I'm just going to go over these parts where I want the dark to be which is along the artist lines here. I'll pull some in just to give it a little depth and dimension. A little bit along the back here. And up the feet. And I want to give this a little bit of depth here by giving it a little bit of a V. And then where the two walruses overlap. And then I'm going to go along this foot area and put some in there. And again along this back here. And right along the bottom. Okay. And then I'm going to go back with my dark smoky slate. And I'm going to blend that dark in there. And I'm keeping, I'm trying to keep my dark inside the light areas. Where I already put that light color. Just a little bit here. And again, along the back. And where the artist drew those lines there. Okay, a little bit here on the head and especially where that face is gonna come together. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna go back with my light smoky slate. And I'm gonna start with the bullet tip here around the face. The tusks. And along here, and here. And then I'm going to switch to my brush tip <clears throat> and blend all of that together. I'm kind of going in the direction that I think his fur would go. Just to make him look a little rounded. So I'm using those in both directions. <clears throat> trying to give that a little bit of shape and dimension with my color so that it doesn't look quite such a flat image. I'll brush again in this direction. Let's just take some quick brush, brush strokes and try and curve those just a bit to give that illusion. 
Okay. And now if I have any areas that I don't like how they are <clears throat> blended, I'll go back with some little circular motions just to further encourage that ink to blend together. Dark meeting light. Okay, and I am happy with that. So there's our little walruses. <clears throat> Those are ready to go now. And now we are ready to bring in our stamp and cut in a boss machine. So let's pull in our mini. And let's grab our dies. So for the petunia pop, I want, let's see, is this going to fit? Will this fit here? Well, like so? I don't know. I need a smaller piece in order to get this on, <coughs> both pieces on. So let's go ahead and cut a, a three quarter inch strip, I think, will do it. Uh, the petunia pop. And then I'm going to cut off the top of this, just because I want to do one pass. Okay, there we go. We'll be able to get both of those through in one pass now, for sure. Okay, so let's get our plates. Now, I'm using plate one. Plate two. That one's a little bit warped, so I'm going to turn it over. And then I'm going to grab my two pieces here. Did I not? I didn't get that big enough. Okay, that's going to be a problem. All right, we might have to do two passes just because I need to get that whole thing um, together. I could do it in two passes, but that's going to defeat the purpose that I want to show you on the easy, easy way to put those in order. Um, okay, piece of tape here. I do better when I have this on a flat surface and then put it on the machine. So let's get that all lined up just so that tape's not very sticky anymore. Move that up. Okay, Let's run that through. We've got that one. Set that aside. And then stick this on here. And roll that through. <clears throat> okay, now we have what we need. Oop. Oh, that one's flying. Not a good thing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and keep that there with all of those right in place. I'm going to keep this piece. And we'll get rid of that piece. Okay. So we're going to put our walruses right about here. Like so. So it looks like they're sitting on the pond or whatever the frozen um, the ice there with the background now I want to put these stars right above there and in order to keep those how I want them I'm just gonna put this down here like so actually hang on I need to put the first one down so I know right where I want it so I'm going to put this one right here, okay, and then I'm going to place this one like this, okay, got that, make sure it's even, then I'm going to lift this one up, I'm going to take my liquid glue, 
I'm going to put one little drop in each one of those holes. And then I'm going to drop my little hearts in those holes. And hopefully that's going to let go. And then these will be in relatively the spot where I want them, right like they were in the die. Okay. There we go. Easy peasy this way. Okay, there we go. Give them a press. Pull that. Well, that did not work. Those two did not stay. Now it doesn't want to come up. Okay. Try that again. Might need a little bit more glue for those two. They decided to be particular. But fortunately, we can just put that back on and stick those back in where we want them. Okay, there we go. Now, those are exactly where we want them. We're going to take our little walruses here and pop them up on dimensionals. Okay, I'm going to put these down. I think I got that a little off center, but it's okay. It's all going to work. Yeah, I really had that off centered for some reason. That's okay. There we go. Okay. So there is the front of our card. I'm going to have to find some embellishments to uh, take care of that. Let's go with these. I'm going to fix that. Let's put a dot there and a dot there. Move that up a bit. Uh-oh, it's coming off its dot. And then we'll put another one up here. Okay. That's how you fix that. And then for the inside of our card, I just put a white layer. And... I actually, on my card, on my um, sample card, I used a retired sentiment from Well Said because that's what I could, that's not what I wanted. Oh my goodness. That's not even the right uh, container. We need our inside piece. Okay, so we're just going to take this and put this in here. And then we're going to take the three little heart stamp and the Petunia Pop ink. And I'm going to stamp one set there and one set there. And then I will find an inside uh, sentiment that will fit appropriately because obviously I don't want, I don't need two for my husband, only one. So this will go to somebody else for an anniversary and I'll find an appropriate saying or I'll just write a note. Okay, so there's our first card. 
And then we're just going to take a piece of that designer series paper. I'm going to find one in here that's similar. But not the same. Maybe this one, right? No, that is the same. Okay, let's find this one will work. Let's go with this. And we're going to cut this at two and a quarter by the six inches. Okay, so I'm going to take that off the top. Two and a quarter. No, I'm not actually. Yeah, I am. Because otherwise I have to take it out of the middle. I don't want to do that. Okay. And do that. This is an easy way to decorate your envelopes. And I'm going to take my envelope, my flap here. I'm just going to put down some liquid glue right on the envelope flap. Close to the edge, but not too close. And then I'm going to add this. And if I think I got a little too much, I'm going to slide it so that it kind of moves over. And then we'll give that a press. Take our paper snips. And cut around the outside edge. And if you nick the envelope, nobody's going to notice. So never worry about that. Okay. And if you use a two and a quarter by six inch piece, that's all the waste you have. Okay. So there you have it. There's card number one. Okay, so let's move on to card number two. Let me clean this up a bit. We're going to need these pieces again. Okay. Ah, oh, thanks, Laura. I'm glad you like that. I love those. Um, I love this paper because it seems to go with so much, and it does a lot of the work for you. Okay. So card number two, let's switch this out of my way. Again, we're using that paper. So let's get this, move that aside. I think I might be a little bit more prepared on this one than I was on the other one. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. Next card up, my sample so I can see what I'm supposed to do. All right, so we're going to be using Boho Blue, Mossy Meadow, and Pretty Peacock ink. I've got a card base that is a standard card base, five and a half by eight and a half. But on this one, it's going to be a fun fold. So this is uh, scored at one and a half and four and a quarter. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and fold that at the four and a quarter mark. And burnish that along that line. Always go both directions when you burnish. And then we're going to take this flap here. And we're going to bend it back. But we're going to make sure that everything lines up nice and straight before we burnish. Okay, so this is what we have. Now this is my favorite way to use my 6x6 scenery paper. So we're going to take this piece of the Wonderful Thoughts paper, and I'm going to cut this at two and three quarters. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut it at five and a quarter, and I want my uh, three quarters of an inch to come off the bottom. So I'm going to cut this at five and a quarter, and then I have this for another use. And then we're going to cut this. <coughs> I think it's two and a half. Hang on just one second. Two and three quarters is not the measurement that I want. 
two and three quarters is the flap that I have. No, two and three quarters is what I want. Okay, so I was right. Two and three quarters. Best to double check before you cut. So two and three quarters. Okay, now I've got this piece left. I need to keep this first, my first spot here. I'm going to turn this upside down. And I'm going to cut this at two. Okay. And then I'm going to rotate it and keep these two pieces in order too. Okay, so I want to keep my scene intact. I've made this card before, so I think you guys know where I'm going here. And then I'm going to add this two and three quarter inch piece to my card front like this. I'm going to center it up, keeping in mind that I'm not, I don't want to glue on this section. Otherwise, I glue my um, card close and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to basically do two strips of my stamp and seal on this side. Okay, that's a nice strong adhesive. So I'm just going to line this up like this. Make sure I've got a pretty even border on all four sides. Then I can open it up and make sure I don't have any um, adhesive here, and I don't. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to take this skinny piece, and I'm going to put my seal on this, and then I'm going to put this piece close to this edge because what I want. I want to open this up and lay it flat and I'm going to put these two pieces I'm going to butt them right up next to each other now you can either butt them or you can leave a thin little border that's up to you let's do it with this one because I didn't with the other one and I'll show you the difference okay so we'll leave just a thin little border there okay and then this piece is going to go in here <clears throat> So let's do that. If your stamp and seal doesn't want to move, just run it on your silicone mat and it'll catch and start going again. So we're just going to leave a thin little border here as well. Okay. There we go. So now when you open this card, you have the full six inch seam, okay? Now we need to do something with this section. So what I've done is I've taken another piece of that same, uh, not the same paper, I took another piece, but I used the thistle part, okay? So for this one, I want this piece to be two and a, two and a half inches, I think. Let me double check that. If you do two and a half, or yeah, two and three quarters is too much. You want two and a half. Okay, so we're going to take two and a half inches of this. And again, I'm going to cut a half inch off the bottom, or three quarters of an inch off the bottom. I'm going to cut this at five and a quarter. But this time, I'm going to, I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm going to take off that blue sky. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to cut this at two and a half. Okay. And then I have these pieces that I can use for another project. So let's put those away. I wanted to show you how I cut this. I could have just cut it, but I wanted to show you how I did it. So now I'm gonna put this piece in here. And these patterns are not gonna line up perfect, but because they coordinate so nicely, it's going to look like it's part of the scenery. Okay. So now we've got that, okay? 
Now let's go ahead and put our decoration here. And for that, we're gonna do a little bit of die cutting. Okay, so we've got these pieces. I've got the largest uh, curved corner rectangle from the Nested Essentials. I've got a scrap piece of peach pie, a scrap piece of petunia pop, and a scrap piece of mossy meadow. And then we've got a scrap of basic white. And we need one other scrap of that designer series paper. Let's see, I need to grab one of those. Maybe one that we used. Let's see, I just need a piece that goes, yep, I want this piece right here. Okay, because we're gonna stamp our sentiment on this and we want this to blend right in <clears throat> with our um, pattern. Okay, so let's go ahead and stamp in basic gray our little mouse. Let that soak in. That wasn't a very good job. Turn that over and try again. I didn't get that inked up very good. Okay. Hopefully those don't overlap. Nope. <clears throat> it doesn't work well when you um, stamp on the back and then try to use blends. That just doesn't work out well. Okay, so for this little mouse, we're going to bring in the gray granite markers. Where do I have those now? Gray granite. All right. And we need petunia pop. And a little bit of the natural tones medium light SU-800. Now you could use the light petal pink for this, but I didn't want to, so it's going to put a little bit of that medium light SU-800 on the nose and the ears, and then I'm going to color in the feet. Okay, and then we're going to start with the light gray granite, and in this case I'm going to give this little mouse a light gray granite coat because he's pretty small. So I don't have to worry so much about the ink drying. I'm going to leave uh, a white spot around the eye and color this in. Okay. This little mouse colors up really quickly. Okay, so we've got that. And then we're going to take our dark gray granite. And I'm going to go around the little heart here. And a little touch up here and on the head and along the back. And then I want to make his leg look a little bit more pronounced. Plus, there's going to be a shadow at the bottom of the heart and along this edge. Okay. And then I'm going to go back with my light gray granite. And I'm just going to blend those two together. Okay. All right. So we're done with those. Let's do the same thing with the petunia pop. Let's give that a light coat of light. Okay, and then we'll go back with the dark. Let's put some little Spots right here by the hands where there would be a shadow. And then maybe a little bit along there. Okay. 
And because that's so small, I'm just going to leave that. It's going to blend itself. And that's going to be done. Okay, now, if you're feeling really good, take your light boho blue Stampin' Blend. And go in where that's white and just dot it. Give him just the littlest of a blue eye. Okay, now we're going to bring in our ink pads. We'll start with Mossy Meadow. And I'm going to put a little bit of Mossy Meadow right here on my glass mat. I'm going to take my ink blending brush, my small one, and I'm going to go over the bottom half of my Nested Essential die here. Okay. I'm just going to blend that color in. All right. And then I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to take the boho blue. And hopefully not get a bunch of ink on me. Can you see? Nope, you can't see that ink. Let's put that right there. And then I'm going to take my blue blending brush and I'm just going to blend that along the top half just to give it a little bit of sky there and that is done and now we're going to take a cloth and wipe that up Clean that off. And then this is the cloth that comes with the Stampin' Mat Studio, which will be available for customer purchase beginning July 2nd. Okay. Okay, I highly recommend this mat. I love it. Okay, so that is ready now, except I'm going to pull in some little grass pieces. And I'm going to pull these in from Musical Jamboree. There are these little pieces right here. And I'm going to take the Mossy Meadow ink. And I need a scrap piece of paper, which I have buried. And I'm going to ink that up. And then I'm going to stamp it off on a scrap piece of paper. And then I'm going to bring it in. And I'm just going to stamp this. And then I'm going to take that one that's a little bit on the curved side. Because I, want to, I don't want this to look uniform. And I'm going to add in some more stamping off again. Okay. And I'm going to do that until I think I've got enough. I'm going back to the single stamp again, or the non-curved. And there we go. Okay, so now I've got some texture in my back, in my grass that looks like it belongs there. And now let's go to the die cut machine and get our pieces, and then we'll put it together and be finished. Oh, wait a minute. We didn't stamp that reading. Let's get that done. We're going to say sending birthday hugs with this one. So that's in the stamp set. So I'm going to see hmm, about where I want that. Okay, so I'm going to put this like this. Okay, so I want to stamp on this section right here. Okay, so let's get the pretty peacock ink for that and stamp that in there. Pretty peacock ink, sending birthday hugs. And I'm going to stamp this right in here. Okay, there we go. 
looks great. Now we're ready to die cut because we can die cut everything all at once. Okay. So let's bring back in that machine. And our plates. Well, let's leave that out for a second. Because I want to take these down first, the ones that I need taped. Okay. So we need this one and this one. And let's get our pieces here. So we've got our little mouse. And right here, let's line that up and tape that down so that doesn't move. And I'm actually going to cut this off. Give myself a little bit more room on this tray. Then we're going to take our, take our flowers. And let's take these dies, and then let's put on our petunia pop, and we're going to grab that, okay? We're going to run all this through together at once. I could have gotten out the big die cut machine and done it probably in one pass, but it's okay. This will all work out. Okay, so let's do that. And run that through. And it's gonna be picky. Okay, don't be picky. Just go. Okay, so we've got those. Put these up here out of the way and we'll go ahead and grab <clears throat> this piece and put this in like this and can I get this? Nope, I don't think I can. Okay. We'll just do it this way. It'll be okay. I should have pre-cut some of this. I'm sorry. I should have done that, and I didn't. Because I need two of these little green flower pieces. So we're going to poke those out with our Take Your Pick tool. And then we'll cut a second one. Okay. And then our last thing to do is to alter our sentiment label piece. And I wanted to do that with you all in case I had some newbies who didn't know quite how to do that. And it's always good as a refresher to see how it's done. So I'm going to take this and I'll flip this back over. As soon as you see a bow in your plate, flip it. Okay, till it's flat. <clears throat> and if you keep doing that, your plates will last a lot longer. So now we're going to take this piece and grab that piece of tape I have on the mouse. And I'm going to bring this down and center it up like so. Okay. Put this over the top. Now we've got that. Okay, let's pull that off. 
and we've got this piece. Now that's way too long. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna slide it along the edge here. There's a lip. And let's put it in there till it catches. Okay, and then I'm just gonna, hang on. If this happens and, and your um, die bends a little bit and it doesn't wanna lay flat, just gently in the center, give it a little tiny bit of a push there. Okay, now I can slide it right down where I want it. And I can put that back in. And now this time I don't want to cut all the way to the end. So I'm going to put this in my machine. I'm going to take my top plate and I'm only going to go part way over the top till about my tape here because this is all I need to cut is this very top piece. The rest of it's already cut. Then I can pull this out, pull this back. And now when I pull this apart, I've got this piece left. And this is sized to fit my sentiment. Okay, so don't be afraid to alter. You can make them longer and shorter. Don't be afraid to do that. That just makes your dies go twice as far. Okay, let's get our pieces here and finish putting this together. Okay, so we've got that. I'm going to throw that up there in my magnetic tray because I don't want those to disappear. And I've got my heart down here. I'm going to push that out. Now you get two of these and you get one more of uh, each of the single and the double um, flower dies in this set. Okay, so now we have all of the pieces that we need. Okay, so let's go ahead and start putting this together. And I'm just going to put it together right here on my tray. So I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue here. Just along the bottom, I am going to put just a Titch, just a dot on the stems, and then I'm going to put this about here. Let's make sure that's where we want it. Um, actually, I want this one to make sure that's all going to fit like I want it. Yep, we're going to go ahead. Let move that up just a little bit. Okay. So there we go. Put that one down. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. A little bit of liquid glue here. Here and here. And I'm going to overlap those just a tiny bit. Okay. And then I'm going to bring in a mat, it's like the stamp and pierce mat. I'm going to take these three blossoms and I need to find the tip of my take your pick tool here, right here. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a curve. And then I'm going to bring this back in. And we're going to put a little bit of a dot right here on this green part that they gave us to glue those two. I'm going to set that down. Each of those. Okay. I'm going to take another dot here and here and then I'm going to put the tip of my little flower here and here and then I'm going to go back and give that a press in the center just to make sure those are adhered. 
sticking. I take a dimensional or two. Well, yeah, this one's good. I can do this with this one. Okay, so we're going to put those on. We're going to bring our little mouse over here. Stand him down here in this little field of flowers. And then we're going to bring back in that card base. And we're going to decide where we want that to go. I want this this old flower over here to show. So I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to try and center it up. I'm going to, I can't go past that flower with adhesive. So I'm going to turn that over and put some adhesive here, here and here. Because if I put it on this side, I'll glue that card closed and I don't want to do that. So we're just going to put this down here and center it. Okay. Make sure we didn't have any adhesive here. And finally, we're going to add our sending birthday hugs in here. And I'm going to use some mini dimensionals for that. And I'm just using the tip of my or my um, tweezers there to poke that up so I can grab those backings just a bit easier. I'm going to add this in here like so. And finally, we're going to take our iridescent foil gems. <coughs> I'm going to take the small ones. I'm going to add those to the center of these three flowers. And there is our card. Okay, so there's that. And then for the inside, we're just going to take a piece of basic white. <clears throat> I'm going to cut this at two inches. by five and a quarter. I'm going to take the piece of pretty peacock here, or I'm going to take the, a sentiment from Heartfelt Hexagon. This is a photopolymer stamp set. It says, I hope your day is filled with joy. And we're going to take that pretty peacock ink again. I am just going to stamp this right there, and I'm not going to add anything else because this is all the room you have to write your message. Okay, so that is it. A little bit of stamp and seal on that, and I'm going to butt this two-inch piece white up to the uh, designer series paper. And by doing that, I ensure that when I close this, you cannot see that white. Okay, so there is our card. And then for the envelope, I've taken the little mouse and I've stamped and colored him or her. And then I have put the uh, three little hearts and colored them in with Petunia Pop. And there is the finished second card. Okay, so let's bring back in the first card. And that is what we have tonight. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, I'm so glad you like those. And I hope that that gives you a new outlook on that designer series paper and how you can use it. Thanks, Lynette. And um, 
I will be back Thursday night on YouTube with another project using the Hearts and Hugs stamp set. And I think it's going to be a 3D project. I already have it designed. So see you at 7 p.m. on YouTube. And then there will be a sketch card challenge on Friday on the KNT Design Stampers group with a card also using the Hearts and Hugs. Until next time, have a good week, everybody. Be happy, stay safe, and happy stamping. Good night.